Hello, I am Heather Quick, owner of the Quick Law Group, where we focus on divorce and family law for women only. Uh, the reason we do that is through my 18 years of experience in uh, dealing with originally both men and women through divorce, I noticed that they go through divorce differently and that there were unique needs and um, situations that women go through that our office, me in particular, and the way I've trained everyone here, we are specifically able to help and guide through. A lot of it just has to do with strategy and anticipating what the other side's going to do. And therefore, really began to narrow our practice to focus only on women so that we can really help you get through this process in the best way possible and achieve your outcomes and goals because that's what it's all about at the end of it. Today, we are going to talk, what I'd like to talk about is something that I get asked very often is when you have a high net worth divorce, meaning there are a lot of assets, which may be in the form of property, investments, could be a business. A lot of times when there's a small business in a divorce, that's the major asset. So it's very important to get that evaluated correctly. And, um, or just, you know, both high earning individuals, you've both invested and how are we gonna deal with it? So today I'd like to talk about the three things that women need to know in a high net worth divorce. You know, what are the three areas that I think I get the most questions about? How can I address that for you? And potentially answer some questions or maybe just get you thinking about some things. Because a lot of times when we're entering in this process, you'll find you don't know what you don't know. So our job as uh, legal, um, your legal team and advisors is to bring up these topics, get your mind thinking about certain things so that we can delve into that topic and answer some questions or maybe present you with a situation that you hadn't quite considered so that we can then really find out how is this gonna get you uh, where you wanna be in the future. So first thing that is going to happen quite a bit in a high net worth divorce is there are going to be other experts. Now, this may seem like a daunting thing, like right now we have to have experts and this is gonna be more expensive because we are paying experts in addition to the attorneys. However, it's going to end up saving you money. Um, and I'll tell you why. When we're dealing with different types of property and um, investments, we really need to understand, because as if you've watched any of the videos before, not all property, not all assets are really created equally. A lot of difference in you know what's today's value maybe what is retirement value are all are we comparing apples to apples rather than apples to oranges because that's important if we are dividing everything 50 50 which is what the law is in Florida as it relates to the assets and liabilities we need to make sure we are one looking at them the right way and accounting for it that way so that's where it really will save costs um, a lot of times, particularly in a business, now if you or your spouse or together you own a business, um, we really need to get a business valuation. And there are so many reasons for this. Uh, one, because you may think it's worth a lot more, a lot less, but we really need to get look at a fair market value because many times so much of your time energy and money has been devoted to building this business whether together you know if it's marital it's all together even if you've never stepped foot in there um there could be you know there's a lot i can go into that for a whole discussion on what different aspects of a business could be in relation to premarital or um or not but in general there's going to be a value and we are going to need to assign a value to that business. It is very rare that after divorce, you're going to be able to work together in that business again. Possible. However, um, may not be, it so depends on your particular relationship. But even if so, even if you think, hey, we are still going to be able to work in this together, we need a value because we're going to need to look at who owns what part, how are things going to be divided, has stock been issued? Um, you know, what do, What are your positions within the corporation? And if you're gonna get bought out, what's that value going to be? So we really have to have a business valuation to do that. And depending on your industry, there are various different business experts out there who may have particular experience expertise in your industry, maybe automotive, or maybe it's retail sales, maybe it is the restaurant business. 
So there are a lot of different things we really need to look at. That is a whole section and that's great for comments. If that's your particular issue, add comments on there, questions. We'll know that is something that you guys want to hear more about and I'll do that, maybe even bring an evaluator at one of our next uh, videos so that we can talk more in depth to answer all of those questions. But definitely as a primary, we get an expert. And sometimes what we do is either, you know, in our representation of you or your husband's attorney, we start with one expert. And let's just see, because everyone typically has an idea of what they think the value will be. Let's get one evaluation and let's see if we think, hey, that looks pretty reasonable. What we've done many times before is one expert does a full on evaluation of the business. Um, and then we'll look at it and just kind of intuitively know and more than intu intuition, it's our based on all our years of experience, our understanding of the industry. We think either, and eh, that might be a little bit low. So then we just consult. We don't do a full um, second evaluation. We just get a consultant to say, hey, these are the things that I agree with, disagree with. This is maybe, I think they're off. A couple hundred thousand or it could be a few million. That's valuable information, very valuable because we just need to know, um, are you leaving anything on the table? What do we have to work with? So we do that a lot. And like I said, we generally start with one. Why hire two full-on experts at the very beginning until we really see you know, where uh, their perspective is? Because if you, um, ones that are really done well, I have found that the experts are, are very close, just a few percentages off of each other as to what they think the value is. Doesn't happen always, but it does happen. Um, next, as far as within the experts, um, sometimes a forensic accountant. That will happen when there is maybe concern, where's the money, where has it gone? And so dig, dig deep in it. Everybody knows forensics from like the television shows that go on on the criminal side and scientific. It's really just an in detail look at kind of, again, determining where is the money, where's it going? A lot of times you'll know the lifestyle, you know, costs, you know, could be, you know, 50 to $100,000 a month. But then the income, you can't find how, how is this being supported. So sometimes it's just a backwards look at it and um, really looking at all of the things that come into play. So that's where forensic accounting comes into the picture under our list of experts. Not always, but we do do that. Um, we generally are always gonna have you consult a CPA and they may be involved with the process as well because we wanna know what's gonna be the tax effect of anything we're looking at from a standpoint of settlement. And then, you know, all of these things build to settlement. And then if that doesn't happen, you've done all the work that will need to take place at trial. A lot that happens in a trial is really educating the judge from a standpoint of this is our situation and if you award these assets to this uh, individual, this will be the, what we call tax effect of that. So that's again a comparison of maybe apples to apples. So we need to add in that tax treatment so that we know two properties worth um, a half a million each may not net equal that amount. So it's just really important. It can sound super complicated, but that's why we have a CPA in there to help us get to the answer of that. And one last, not the last expert, but one that we, you will see frequently will ask you is, do you have a financial advisor? And is this somebody you've worked with or do we need to maybe find one because you and your husband have used one jointly who knows, and, and a lot of times we still use the same people and they don't have a conflict, sometimes they do. The reason again we wanna look at the financial advisor is, all right, we are dividing our assets and liabilities and depending on where you are, you know, in the spectrum of life, what age, let's make sure we're getting the right assets for you to help you carry through your life. And again, what your outcome is, what you wanna achieve, just like you would in a financial advisor situation. But again, the more information we have, the more power we have, and the more ability to be creative, again, to get you to the outcome that you desire, not even just out of this divorce, but if you've heard my um, videos before, I'm always looking at your life three, five years after. Like we can really, we want to plan for your future. And this is part of that process, bringing in the right experts when we have a lot of decisions to make and that makes sure that we make the best possible decisions we can in presenting the case and structuring uh, 
the strategy to get you where you want to be. Um, the number second thing within our three things that you need to know in a high net worth divorce are the assets. How are they going to be treated? And of course, the experts come into play there, but we really have to look at how are we valuing our assets in the business and um, what does the business own? So that can be a lot of it. Some businesses, you know, the value is really in the services they provide. Some businesses, there's value in the services, but they have a lot of high value contracts and maybe there's equipment involved. Maybe the real estate, the business owns some real estate. So a lot of things can come into play there that we really want to look at. And if we're going to be in a situation where the business is going to be generally going to one, um, one spouse or another, so there's going to be a buyout, we certainly don't want to leave anything on the table that is of value and assets that belong to the business, however they need to you know, be divided and appropriately accounted for. Rental properties are also an asset that we look at, and we look at it differently than, say, your marital home and other property. Excuse me, but in the reason being, rental property can um, sometimes it works as a loss on your tax return. And I'm not a CPA, so this is not uh, financial or accounting advice. However, in our experience, we know enough to say, hey, let's talk to our accountant because we have certain rental properties, and they're a lot like we talked about tax effects, tax issues, may value one spouse or another. Really want to look at that, how that will, you know, how that will impact you. It could be a real advantage to having rental property with the other assets that you're looking at. So that's just you know how we look at that and why, because it may be, um, and your husband's saying, well, that rental property, I just, we just lose money on that every year, so I want you don't want that. Well, you might, because it might really give you a tax break. It may be something that's valuable. So, and I've talked about this in other you know videos we've done, certainly seminars. Want to look at all of those, want to really dive into the tax returns to understand how that will end up at the end of the balance sheet, you know, how you'll net on that. Same with the marital home, that tends to be, you know, when we have that um, divided between the parties, obviously we either have to sell it, one person gets it versus another. Want to look at how that affects, um, again, the balance sheet and where you want to be in the future. It may not be something that you want to have so often the home you know and it's just normal it has just so much emotional ties especially if you've been in a home a long time or if you custom built it you spent so much of yourself pouring into making this so beautiful but now it has, it's really an expensive piece of property that's going to cost a lot to maintain and what can happen a lot is the emotionality tied to that asset you value more than another buyer is going to value. It's really important to kind of really just be clear about that. Let's look at how that's going to affect you because those emotions and that, you know, those ties to the property that could be to your detriment if that is the only reason you're making that decision. And not always, but at least it's worthwhile to look at it from a clear perspective and what it's going to cost to maintain this and are you giving up other investments and assets all for this? And that can be dangerous because then you're not diversified. And as we know, you don't want all your eggs in one basket, certainly not in property based on what we've recently experienced uh, a few, not, you know, it hasn't been that long, a few years ago. So it's just really important from my perspective to help clients see the full picture on the assets. Um, we're gonna usually want an appraiser. Again, this is similar to business valuation and it tends to not always be as high as we think it would. But sometimes we're surprised, um, you know, from a standpoint of the client's thought, oh, well, this is definitely worth $5 million. The appraisal comes back at three and a half. It's frustrating. And at the end of the day, that is just information to base decisions on. It's worth what somebody's willing to pay for it. And until the buyer comes and pays for it, we don't really know. So we're trying to get a good picture of it. And it may just be that. We decide, hey, let's just put it on the market and split what we get. You know, that is always an option. But those are things that we're gonna look at. And on commercial property, you need to get appraised too, because again, we want to have true numbers and values to make decisions on. It's just never good to be guessing when we have various options, because if we guess wrong, that is your future. And you may not even recognize 
the valuation was wrong until it's too late. Usually you're not until it's too late and it's much further down the road. So that can be very difficult. Um, one other thing in assets that we have dealt with frequently is, you know, in other states, um, you know, and that works fine. We get appraisals in other states. We've had them in other countries before, another property. We deal with that as well. A lot of times, um, even on collectibles, I will tell you, sometimes there's a lot of value in um, things that, you know, one person values and the other spouse is like, that's a bunch of junk. Well, it might be worth a personal property appraisal because you would be surprised at, you know, the collectibles that can have a lot of value. Again, don't leave it on the table. It, um, it's really important because things just add up quickly. Same with jewelry and watches and artwork. That seems to be, you know, tends to me at least people think, well, okay, of course we'll do that. But sometimes there, there's a lot there and it's worthwhile to go through. Hire the appraisal, spend the money because you'll end up, now that you know the value, you've saved a lot. So it was really money well spent. Information now that you have to base decisions on because when we are dealing with a divorce from the asset and the high net worth, it's very much like a business transaction and we need the numbers because the numbers are what are going to tell the story and help us plan how to move forward in the future. So uh, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about alimony. I always talk about alimony but it's still present even in a high net worth divorce because just because there's a lot of assets to divide does not mean that alimony does not come into play. It's really important to understand that you think, well, if I'm gonna get all of these assets, I'm not gonna get alimony or I won't have to pay alimony. Again, it just depends because it depends on how we've divided those assets. The biggest area where I think it will affect alimony is if some of those assets are income producing. So there's an example of that would be, um, you know, IRAs, and you've reached the age where you now are taking disbursements, that's clearly gonna be income. Um, or your spouse is already retired and the pension is divided, so now each of you, or the 401k, each of you are getting a certain amount. So then that's gonna affect your income. Even though it's the division of an asset, it's actively producing income. Same with rental property. If it's, you know, maybe let's say you've owned it 30, 40 years, paid off, now it's just giving you income. We need to look at that. So we'll have divided the assets. If they are producing income, then that goes over onto the ability to pay in need, which is where we look at alimony. And many times um, we've divided all the assets and if invested properly, yes, you should get some return on them. However, I don't want you to think that just because you've, you know, you believe, hey, we have a lot of assets, we'll divide that, I'll be fine. That's one thing, but we don't want to invade the principal. Again, that's really in looking at where you are at you know, this time, age-wise, you know, future, what you need moving forward, which is why the financial advisor, and we kind of look at, hey, what are you going to need for the rest of your life? That's the alimony evaluation. Because just because you have assets, if you have to live off of those for the next 25 years, that's probably not going to be enough and or even if it was, the law is not going to require you to invade the principle of your assets. Those are separate. We divide all the assets and then we look at alimony. Um, and again, that goes into not only ability but need. Even if you make more than your spouse, they may not need alimony. So, you know, it is a two, well, it's, to say a two prong um, might simplify it a little bit more than it is, but um, that's a big part of it. I've had several clients and they, you know, were the, they definitely made more than their husband and the husband, you know, files the claim for alimony. It's like, well, you might have the ability, but there's no need. Um, and it could be reversed too. So those are really two of the things we look at in addition to so many other factors on alimony. So I just, I've had, you know, experience in the clients. That's, you know, one thing they think, well, if I get, half the assets I'm going to be fine but recognize um, you know we don't want we want you to be more than just fine one we want to make sure you get everything you're entitled to under the law and at least understand what that situation is uh, don't want to ever really be in a position where you just are making quick judgments without the facts and information because generally you're going to regret those decisions later on 
it is so important to have the information and then make educated decisions and informed decisions based on, hey, this is the entire financial picture. This is, these are my options. Then, in the advice of your attorney, hey, this is what I think you should do. We've talked to the CPA, we've talked to the financial advisor, we really understand the whole scope of what is here and you know the map of your future to some extent. This, these are the decisions we recommend. That's really the best way to go through a divorce from that standpoint of planning for your future. It can be difficult because I've talked all about the tactics and financial aspect without the emotions, but that's our job to really focus on that, get you to the right people to help hash out the emotions and cope with that, but really want to make sure you are in the best financial situation possible. Now, um, trying to look at my notes to make sure I don't forget anything. Um, one thing that you could do as the beginning of this process is go to our website, which is thequicklawgroup.com. We have a free divorce guide. Please feel free to download that. That should answer some of your initial questions. Again, get your mind thinking. Maybe you hadn't even thought of some of these things. So now you can begin to formulate some good questions as we begin this process for you. Um, and certainly we are going to be constantly uploading content and videos. So please comment if, you have, if you'd like more information on a specific topic, we can absolutely do that. Follow the channel so that, I think that's just to hit the subscribe button and then that way um, you'll be notified when new content is available. Um, my goal here is to really just help you gain some basic information because obviously if you're watching this, you're either in it or you're thinking about it. And a lot of women in my experience as we've dealt with this and talked to them, they are really trying to gather the information because maybe they've already made the decision to get the divorce, it's just a matter of when. And I'm trying to gather that information to make the best decisions moving forward. And I hope that this is helpful to give you that information. If there's anything else we can do at the Quick Law Group, please call us. Um, our number will be on the screen and the website so that any of our locations, you can get in touch with us and we can answer your initial questions, help you determine if you know we're the right firm for you and move forward with your life. Thank you and have a great day.